Catherine Carroll received her PhD from Gallaudet University, where she developed a national magazine and essay and art contest for deaf and hard of hearing students and edited a publication for teachers and administrators. She also wrote for local newspapers and authored and co-authored books about deaf history and the lives of deaf people. She always enjoyed and found inspiration in working with students. And this is what brought her to Montgomery College. Um, yeah, uh, as an adjunct, maybe I particularly got a lot out of the interaction with people um, and learning what everybody did. We put our syllabus together uh, as you know, you put your syllabus together in the summer, right? And then you come to participate in the program and do your syllabus with your students. So when I'm putting my, stu my syllabus together, I was like, um, well, the people I, I have met, they know. I go, I go, well, this race stuff, I, I don't even believe in race. I mean, what is race, really? What, what, what is that crazy word that's had so many definitions over in different time periods and we still draft it. Now I'm a person that when I was a little kid I hated the word babysitting because I was not a baby and I couldn't use the word Indian until I heard some actually an elderly Indian gentleman use the word and I was like oh I get it you know I couldn't quite use Native American either because we're all Native Americans or not, you know, Native or adopted of Americans. So I always had this problem with words. I had this problem with race and everybody knows it. Yet, while I was quite I, unmoved that there was no such thing as race, I was absolutely convinced that we're not in a post-racial society. So this long thing is to say that as the year went on, I saw more and more what I could have done with my class as people came in and reported on things. Faced with it in the summertime, putting together a syllabus, uh, in a sense, I ducked, okay? So that's what you're gonna, let's see, you're gonna sort of see here, is that I dealt with the theme indirectly and I just killed the computer. <laughs> this is, <laughs> Maybe <laughs> this down. <laughs> uh, sorry. So this is what. So I'm going to sort of walk us back through what I decided to do with wanting to incorporate both these visits to these these rich museums in my classroom, and also deal with with race. And also, you know, not walking, I mean, one of the things we talked about in our meetings was that for a white person to talk about race almost, it means actually to sort of, um, I think they use, the, this is a little bit of a strong phrase, but, but unpack white guilt, okay? I didn't want to walk into my classroom and, and do that. So what I did was, should I just talk? The battery's critically low. Okay. Okay, so what I did was basically I, I took for the first time a theme for the classroom, which I think in some ways even that was a breakthrough. The theme that I took was what it means to be human. And look at the, looking at this through things we share and ways we're different. Well, of course, the most direct thing we share, I mean, our origins, right? Uh, Carl mentioned the, the National Museum of Natural History, the Hall of Human Origins. It's right there. It's rich. So that became the focus for my class. I actually did ask everyone to do the same assignment because I wanted us to have a common base in the classroom to talk. Um, so they had a little form to fill out to show me that they had seen all, their, all the exhibits. and. Uh, they had a paper to write, the paper being to explore how we are, the, how, what we share with our ancestors and how we're different, specifically by looking at the clothing that they're wearing. Um, so I put down my students, uh, some of the slides are my students' comments about this, which I lifted from their papers. They got it immediately. I mean, the experience for them and then as I felt it reflected from them was so overwhelming. I mean, they, came, they said, 
Uh, our origins, there's no white, there's no black, there's no race. We have one origin. They didn't know. They didn't know we all come from Africa. Had no idea. It was, it was mind boggling. They, they came and then they told me about this. So um, that was the first thing. And then they started talking about other similarities, like uh, you would see uh, he carries a spear. I carry a cell phone, <laughs> you know. I mean, perfect, right? They had tattoos to identify who, what group they belonged to. So do I. So they, they really keyed it immediately to this shared human, human background. Um, they also said, I, I had a little slide, they also said, uh, different things that were sort of extracurricular, like, the, like they hadn't been to the Smithsonian. Se several of them had never been to the Smithsonian. Several of them had never ridden the metro. And one of them wrote, wrote about how, he didn't quite use the word how inspired he was, but he wrote how to trust him on his own to go to the Smithsonian. They had a class canceled and they were told they had two weekends and then these, this four day block to get there. I think I had two students that did it a little bit later, and, and that was it. Everybody went. Everybody got there. So there were all these kind of side benefits. Another thing I did was I encouraged them to go together, um, and they did do that, a, a number of them. And they wrote about it, and now I'm friends with so-and-so. I mean, and these, again, are from their papers. So I felt like it wasn't just rich in the way I wanted it to be rich, which it was much more rich that way than I had expected, but also in these little side things. Then we talked about also the ways that were different, and we approached that through culture, culture. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was like vaudeville. It's my time to go. <laughs> so again, I approached that through culture and through race. We did that through two readings, one of which I had already picked out. And again, this was, this was in the summer. It's Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. Maybe some of you have read it. Um, it was actually the number one book on the college campuses among freshmen until he wrote, until he published, actually, their book, their, uh, just his other essays, a second book. But this Outliers really fits for college freshmen. And it really fits with the idea of race in the sense of things that are totally outside of our control and how sometimes we internalize the results of them. Um, so the essays were, I thought, really good for our students. We also have wonderful essays specifically focused on, on race in a Brief Bedford Reader, which is our EN 101 book. So lucky for you, we'll go right to, let me see. Um, no, we won't. Not yet. Um, so we had these, these three aspects of the class going on. Um, OK. These, are, these, were, these were the themes we decided, I decided on. These are how they explored them through going to the museum. Um, this was a quote from Roberto, who actually wrote this down. He said he meant to spend an hour or two. He spent the whole day. Um, and these are the other quotes that came out of their papers. <laughs> it has improved. <laughs> and these are other comments. I'll just leave them on briefly. Yeah, they, they, they really totally understood with, you know, not much difference, at least from the homo sapiens sapiens who were there. Now, one thing I might want to mention is one of the things that came up with uh, students in both classes a very small minority, but we do have homeschooled young people that are really smart and are really sort of fundamentalist Christian. This viewpoint is not represented in the Smithsonian, I want you to know. Okay, there's no Adam, there's no Eve. And, and they said, where, where is this? I said, well, this is science. And, you know, I, I actually, I, Stephen Jay Gould says, there are different magisteriums, right? Give them a big word. You know, this is the magisterium of science and the world, and this is the magisterium of religion. So they were reluctantly satisfied with that. <laughs> These, this is the picture that I thought was so wonderful. One of my students down there, I did require that they send me a picture on their cell phones. They all could do this. I loved the pictures. I absolutely love the pictures. 
Um, and this is, again, how we did what is different, race, gender, power, culture, class. Um, I also should have put in disability, although we didn't really talk too much about that. Um, but you know, these are the things that separate us. The, so we tried to touch on all on these, and they do. They're, I mean, it's all in our wonderful essays. These are from the Brief Bedford Reader. reader. Oh, and then in addition, and this was another uh, new addition, really, they had to get into, they had to pick a book, and they had to pick a book that they share with at least one other person in the classroom. So they had to get into books to kind of do group reading. And um, all of these, except for one, which is two, which were scientifically and very difficult. I said, hey, if you don't want to spend, if you don't like science or you don't want to spend time reading this, don't, don't even try it. If you want some light reading, go with Funny and Farsi. It's the, it's the memoir of an Iranian woman here in the United States. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, wonderful reading and very fast. Um, so that was the lightest. The scientific is really the darkest. But I put up things there that really kind of show the experience of people affected by things that separate us, OK? Handled in different ways. Of course, the, um, the, the, two, the two real uh, classics, Black Boy, Richard Wright, and The Diary of Anne Frank, um, by Anne Frank, um, overwhelming books. And they're the kinds of things that really you need a class in to do a close reading, but here they off, were off on their own, and I'm going to shut up. Um, <laughs> this is the last thing they said. We get it, we're doing more than just English. One of them said, oh, I get it, we're getting, doing more than just English, and I just wanted to th say thank you to everything that did it. And, <laughs> That is one of the things I, this year we're adding, um, oh gosh, what's it called? N Always Running by Luis Rodriguez, which one of the students came up with. I did tell them they could come up with one. That the, This particular list was not. The, the, I, and I, I thought later that would be a really good thing to do, to get them to come up with these memoirs instead of me just saying. They've got to do it, yeah, in groups. Last, last time, they just did it, and then at the end, each group reported to the class. This time, I think I'm going to require many reaction papers, just really short within the groups. Yeah. And this time, I assigned it a little bit earlier, too. I said, just get the book, because what I found was when you don't get to it till it's time to read it, which we did Gladwell's Outliers first, and then we did, then they were, then I was expecting stuff about what they had been reading, and of course, some of them hadn't been reading it. And it's not enough just to say, get the book. You know? so. okay. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, one more. Here we go. Uh, I just want to make sure it, that this is for an EM class or an ALF class? Uh, EM 101. EM 101. And we'll do, we're going to do the same thing again. Um, my cohorts say they came up with these really good ideas. I mean, we talk about words and words changing. Well, of course, I could have thrown out race. I could have included race. I mean, with women or bathroom, you know. Um, I could have included race. I didn't. I didn't. I was afraid to do it. So this year, I'm going to try to include race and see what they say. Yeah. Oh, how, she wants to know, how do we schedule the trips to the Smithsonian with the students? And I didn't. I just gave them, I said, and you have two weekends and a, cla a canceled class, and you're on your own. You've got to do it. But others did it differently. I, I, I canceled a class. I have a two-hour class session. So I canceled that class session and said, gave them that time to, to go to the museum. And almost all of them went at that time. I say something like 90 did it over the, that, that weekend. And some people, I know, Sadie, you, you scheduled? You I, I, we went together on a Saturday, and I told them in advance. It worked out well. This semester I'm doing, and one, one student's taking a Saturday class, so he has to go separately. So, but still, I mean, one out of 20 is pretty seems to be. Well, and I, and I did a Saturday also with my class, and I told them if they wanted to go together, we would meet at the campus and walk to the metro, and then, uh, or at Tacoma Park, and, and then some just met us there. Okay. And they had a choice of which um, demonstration they would go to. That's the same thing happened. My students started to pair up, because I gave them the choices. 
So someone said, well, I want to go to the American Indian Museum, meet me at such and such place, and they started doing that pretty much on their own with all their wonderful little Twitter and texting <laughs> uh, machines and devices. So that's what they ended up doing. All right. Thank you so much, Catherine.